Hello. and welcome to our 7pm service. I'm Gemma. I'm Jay. And it is great to have you with us this evening. If this is your first time coming to watch anything at uh, the Parish of Cove, it is lovely to have you with us. If you come every week, um, but normally at 10 o'clock in the morning, it's lovely to have you with us. If you're just kind of exploring church online to see what all the fuss is about with lots of people watching online services, it's great to have you with us as well. So, Jay, what have we, what have we got coming up? Well, we have a, a service of two halves, mm -hmm. if you like. So the first half, we're going to spend a bit of time um, in sung worship where we'll have a couple of songs. And uh, if you find singing at your TV or your laptop a little bit weird, um, then just take the time to have a few minutes of quiet, listen to the words and maybe just encounter God through that and express something there or otherwise belt it out to all your neighbours. <laughs> uh, followed on from that, we will have a short talk from Gemma here on, on tonight's theme of belonging. And then after that, Gemma. After that, then we're going to move off uh, Instagram and Facebook and YouTube onto Zoom, which is the second part of our evening, where basically we're going to kind of chat a little bit more about that subject of belonging. We're going to debate, we're going to discuss, we're going to explore together, we're going to learn from each other and want to hear what you've got to say about the topic as well as you hearing what I've got to say about the topic. Uh, and as well as that, it's just a chance to get to know each other, maybe catch up with people we do know, make friends with people that we don't know. And well, after the service, grab yourself a glass of wine, maybe some crisps or a coffee um, and join us on Zoom. And the details for Zoom, we're, we're all familiar with Zoom now, aren't we? Now we're in lockdown. But um, the details for joining it for the, the meeting numbers, they will be underneath on the comments on Facebook um, or on Instagram. Uh, so do yeah, check those out and then come and join us. But what's but, happening? But first. First, mm. we have our potentially award-winning new feature of Lockdown, Lockdown Life, Life. Uh, with Steve, uh, our associate uh, rector here in the parish. Mm -hmm. He's going to be interviewing different people each week and exploring and asking questions of how life is going in lockdown or what life is like uh, mm. in the particular theme of this week. And, and we're really looking forward to getting to know different people uh, over the weeks and what people think about the different subjects that we're looking at. So we're, we're really excited about uh, Steve doing Lockdown Life. It's going to be you great. Missed your, you missed your cue. I did miss my cue, but I, I'm looking forward to it, to hearing from different ones of you for what, as we explore this topic, what does that look like for your life? How does that play out in your workplace, in your family, at home? Yeah, I'm excited to find out more as weeks go on. So am I. Great. Shall we, shall we pray and then we can hand over to Steve and then uh, have a time of worship. Let's pray. Lord God, as we are gathered together this evening, uh, well, together over the internet, Lord, I just pray that you will be with us, that you will speak to us. Lord, I pray that um, this evening will be uh, an enjoyable time for us, but also an important step on our journey with you. In your name. Amen. 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 So Steve, over, over to you. you. Hi everyone. Here we are live in the garden at our place here in Southwood and it's brilliant to be here with Emma. So thanks so much for joining me, albeit I think at a suitable yeah. social distance. Looks about one meter plus from where I'm sitting. Um, Emma, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are. Uh, I'm Emma, I'm 19 and I'm just finishing a gap year. I've been in the parish of Cove for a long time. I've grown up here. I was baptised at St John's and I now go to Christchurch. Thanks ever so much, Emma. So we begin our series uh, called Lockdown Life. And this time we're looking at belonging. So tell us, Emma, the various areas of your life. To which you would consider you belong? Um, I think for me a, a big one is family. Um, I'm a very family orientated person and I'm very close to, to my grandparents especially so I definitely have a big sense of belonging there. Um, professionally as well I'm really lucky that I've got some great colleagues and I, I do um, definitely feel a sense of belonging in my staff environment um, and church as well for me there's sort of a nostalgic element of belonging there from where I've, I've been there all my childhood so that's really lovely as well. Thank you. 
as we go through our life, now you did tell us you were 19. Yes. Yeah. As, as we go through our life, um, sometimes we belong to things uh, in a sense more permanently and some more temporarily. So tell us the areas of your life you described. What would be more permanent and perhaps which more temporary? Not necessarily in, in a negative sense, but that's often how life is as we get older. Yeah, sure. Um, and I definitely think an example of, of things being more temporary is with my friendships. I'm at a stage of life now where I'm sort of, you know, I've, I've done school, I've done college, and now I'm in this in-betweeny stage where I haven't quite gone to uni yet. And I'm very aware that the friends I have now might not last once we all sort of disperse and go in our different directions. And as you say, that's not necessarily a negative thing. I can meet more people. Um, my family, you know, I'm really close to them. And because we're family, I definitely think those relationships will last. Um, and with church, it's a strange one because I, I still go to the church I grew up in. So I'm definitely always going to feel a, a connection here. Um, however, my church community may change as I sort of move on and, and leave home. That's really interesting because you're saying that your, your church, I guess at your age, is still very closely connected with your childhood mm. experience. Um, what would you see perhaps your, your sense of belonging in, in a church look like, perhaps in 5, 10, 15 years' time, um, as you sort of, if you like, to, to independently, if I'm not mixing these, sort of to independently belong to a church aside from your parents what would that look like do you think what would you be looking for I think certainly finding finding a demographic that's a bit more my age and with similar interests outside of Christianity as well <clears throat> um, I definitely think that you know no matter what age or, or job you have being a Christian does give you that connection but I would like to in the future have more of a circle that are a closer age to me and where we're able to extend our our friendships outside of a Sunday service. So w would you would you then describe your belonging to church as as you look for into the future as, as that being a permanent thing but perhaps in different looking perhaps different in different seasons of your life? Yeah I think so I think so and I think as well if we're going to look really into the future you know I, I want to have a family and, and similarly that gives you different relationships as well and and in order to raise my children as Christian, they all need a certain different church environment to maybe what I would want as a single woman. Absolutely, yeah, thank you for that. Um, in English, of course, we, we have the, the, the idea of belonging, um, both as, as, as an abstract uh, noun, but we also call uh, things our belongings. And uh, if God said, right, I'm taking you off to a desert island, what uh, what belongings would you take? You could take two things, maybe three. Let's give give Emma three if she wants to. But what what two things to start with would you take? If God said, right, you're off to a desert island tomorrow. You're gonna have two belongings. Um, I think an absolute necessity for me is my music. I just use music on a daily basis, and it, it's something that really nurtures like my spiritual health, um, as well as like my mental health. So I think that is a definite. I'd probably take my Bible, not necessarily because it's something I read on a daily basis, I don't, I'm not a big Bible reader, but I'm fully aware that if I'm on a desert island, I might want to feel closer to God, so I will probably, that's when I'll start reading the Bible. <laughs> that's fantastic, thank you. God, you could have one more thing. What? That's got to be my cat, I can't leave my cat. It has home. to be the cat. <laughs> fantastic, well, I hope that you, your cat, your Bible and your music have a wonderful time on that desert island but uh, it's been brilliant having you uh, with me here in the garden and we look forward to the time when we can perhaps be uh, a little bit closer together and be with each other in real life but thanks so much for listening and a huge thanks to you Emma for uh, joining me and sharing so openly something of your story of belonging thanks very much indeed
Father, we thank you that you are a great God and worthy of our worship. And we thank you that we get to spend this time now with you. Amen. 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 Well, um, now Gemma's going to talk to us for, uh, well, she's promised to aim for about 10 minutes. So who knows? <laughs> um, and so before we get into that, let's just pray uh, for Gemma and for us. Mm. So, Father, we thank you for this evening and we thank you for this chance to spend time looking at what you have to say about belonging. Mm. And we pray that you would anoint Gemma now to speak your word and that you would enable us to receive your truth and your goodness through your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to clear off and let Gemma get yeah, on with it. Yeah, feels a bit awkward sat on the, sat on the sofa. Uh, so, as Jay said, I'm, I'm Gemma, I'm the Rector of Cove, which is like another word for vicar. It's a little bit surprising as I didn't grow up in a going to church at all. So actually to find myself here is slightly interesting. Um, now to Jay, we've got two children and two cats. Now, it's funny how we do this, isn't it? How we introduce ourselves in that way where we say something about what we do, something about maybe who we know, or something about the relationships that we have, our spouse, or maybe if it's in a work context, we might say something about our work colleagues, you know, oh, I work with Terry. Or if we're at a wedding, we may 
just kind of slip in how we know the happy couple. And I suppose we do this spiel of introducing ourselves for a number of reasons. Maybe to gain credibility for others, it's like we're saying, I'm supposed to be here, or I belong here. Or maybe we do it to reassure ourselves um, that we should be here, that whole imposter syndrome thing where we're just saying, oh, I'm okay to be in this room. Or maybe we introduce ourselves in that way because we want to form a connection with other people. Ultimately, it's all about because we want to belong. Now, psychologists Roy Bauermeister and Mark Leary, I hope I've got the, the names pronounced right, but they both said in 1995 um, that belonging or that need to belong was a fundamental uh, driver for human beings in the same way that food might be and shelter might be. In fact, to quote them, this is what they said, much of what human beings do is done in the service of belongingness. I suppose that makes sense if we look at society. If we think of all the haircuts we've had or the slightly cringeworthy clothes of fashion choices that we have made to kind of fit in with others or the fashion at the time. And we do that because we long to fit in. We long to belong. Now psychologists, as I said, would say that is because it's a key mental driver within us. Now, I would say it is that, but it is that because God created us to be in community. The very essence of who God is, is relationship. The relationship between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In fact, even the names of God as Father and Son tell us that relationship is at the heart of who God is. Now, don't worry, we're not going to go into a Trinitarian theology uh, lecture this evening, so we can leave that for another time. But what we do know is that we are made in God's image. The creation narrative tells us that uh, in Genesis 1 it says let us make man in our image, in our likeness. And then in verse 27 of chapter 1 in Genesis it says so God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. Now God created them God just didn't create just one person. In fact, it says uh, a bit later on in Genesis 2 that it's not good for man, meaning man or woman, human being. It's not good for man to be alone. I will make a suitable helper for him. So at the heart of who God is and at the heart of who we are is to belong. Family, community and friendships is key to who we are. And we see this throughout the whole of the Bible. You know, if we think about the calling of Abraham, God just didn't send Abraham or call Abraham, but he called Abraham's family and then creates Abraham into this nation of people. And then we see one of the first thing that Jesus does in his ministry is he goes and calls the disciples, 12 other people. Now, the number 12 and why there was 12 of them is for a number of reasons that we're not going to get into right now. But what we do know is that he calls a group of people, a group of people who eat together, a group of people who travel together, a group of people who do life together. And it's into that broader background that we come to the question, where do I belong? Or maybe more pertinently, the question could be, to whom do I belong? Now, if you went to Sunday school, the old instincts may kick in at this point, and you might think, if I'm in doubt of an answer to a question, then what you just need to say is Jesus. Now, of course, you'll be right. To who we belong is Jesus. In fact, in the baptism service, what we say is Christ claims you as his own. So we do belong to Jesus. We are his. In fact, there's this amazing episode that happens in the Gospels of both Matthew and of Mark, where Jesus is teaching and where he's teaching, the place is completely packed. No one can get in and not even his mothers and his mother and his brothers as they come to the door. Um, and then someone tells Jesus, oh, Jesus, your mum and your brothers are here and they're outside and they want to speak to you. And then Jesus replies to them with this um, response, which you can find in Matthew 12, verse 48. Who is my mother and who is my brothers? Then he points to his disciples and says, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sisters in heaven. 
So Jesus is making this incredible statement here of how he views his disciples. And think about it, this is in the context where family is really important. And he says to his disciples that they are his family and that's massive. And we, as the readers and as people that are listening to this, are meant to identify with the disciples in that passage. If you like, the door is open for us to belong in that way, in that way of family. But that's just not the complete picture. If you like the Sunday school question of to who do we belong? Yes, it is Jesus. That is the answer. But that's not the full answer. That's only half of the answer. Because when we talk about being part of the family or being part of a family, we've got different experiences maybe of what that might mean. But there are three things that we know that are true in all families, whether that's a biological family or whether that's our church family. Firstly, you don't choose your family. It's often the phrase, isn't it? We choose, can choose our friends, but we don't choose our family. Secondly, being part of a family can be challenging. You don't always necessarily get along. In fact, if you want to find the person that can wind you up the most, it's often your sibling, isn't it? They can irritate you in a way that others can't and the way your family know you. And yeah, that can be a little bit more difficult in a family situation. But in the better circumstances of family, the third thing we know is that there is no deeper love or no deeper commitment as strong as it will find in our families. No one knows you better due to the shared history and shared experience that you have in your family. And you are blessed indeed if you have friendships that go to the level and the depth that we find in our families. Now in Acts 2, at the beginning of the church, we've just had um, Pentecost and the Spirit has been poured out for all of Jesus' followers. And then the first thing that we see that's described after that is the fellowship of believers or the church being family. So the second part to that question that maybe we were asked in Sunday school, to who do you belong, is I belong to you and you belong to me. If you like, we are in this together. Now there's a Southern African word um, called Ubuntu and that's often a, actually it's a philosophy that's based on that as well. And this word Ubuntu means I am because we are. I am because we are. We belong because we are connected. And this is why as part of our journey together here at 7pm is that we'll be doing some stuff that looks a little bit like a service, but also we'll be having some time on Zoom because we want to journey faith together. So the first part will look similar to what it does for this, that has done this week. But the second part is where we get to know each other, where we get to support each other, where we get to cheer each other on because belonging and journeying together and journeying faith with others is key to who we are. We belong to God. We belong to each other. People should never have that feeling of imposter syndrome when they come to a church or they're a part of a church family. Now, don't get me wrong, being family, being family or being in a family isn't easy and the church is no exception to this. That's why the Bible speaks so much about reconciliation. Because people upset us, because we upset other people, but we need love and forgiveness and reconciliation for us to function as a family together. And we need God's spirit to equip us and to help us to be able to do this. So part of what we're gonna do in our times together is create some time, just a small space for us to wait on God allow his Holy Spirit to meet us, to equip us and to enable us to live this life that is exciting and an adventure before us that he calls us to. So I'm just going to do that now, where you are in, in your home, in your garden, in your living room, in your bedroom, in the kitchen. Let's just take some space just to wait on God and ask him to meet with us about this subject of belonging. You might want to close your eyes, you might want to put your hands out if that's helpful. And I'm just going to say a prayer. Lord God, we ask you to come by your Holy Spirit now and to meet with us, wherever we are and whatever we're doing. And for some of us, maybe that is the message that we need to hear today, that message that we belong to God. 
that Christ has claimed us as his own and that we can have confidence in that and that we're part of his family. And maybe if, if that's something that rings true for you right now in the moment of where you are, just offer that as a prayer to God and allow his spirit to meet with you and to minister to you in that place, knowing that you belong, that you are his, that you are his child. There may be other things that are happening in your week or in your life at this moment that you want to maybe ask God about or offer to him. Now in a moment, we're going to listen to a song which was actually written by um, a friend of mine and Jay's and um, someone else in their church. And it just reminds us about how God sees us, how he, how we belong to him. And as you listen, maybe this could be an opportunity just to ask God to, to speak to you, to meet with you and remind you of the truth that he has spoken over you. And then after that, Put the kettle on, grab yourself a glass of wine or a cup of coffee or a gin and tonic, maybe some snacks and join us on Zoom where we're going to be taking this conversation further in small groups talking about belonging um, with others and we'd love you to join us and the Zoom details for that will be um, just in the comments below if you're on Facebook or Instagram. So do, yeah, do find those details and come and join us. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. I will call Jay back over from the other side of the <laughs> other side of um, our room so here we go slick you see this is brilliant should you say goodbye good to well, see you hopefully see well, you in yeah, about five minutes. minutes so we'll see you in about five minutes and uh, to chat about this further hey. god bless Bye. god bless Remember each hour of the day, then I will choose to recall how my God.
God made a way, how he straightened the path and he helped me to walk, how he taught me to love and he urged me to talk, how he listens in prayer and his power is great, how he's gracious and merciful and he patiently waits for me to surrender what little I have, just to fall at his feet and to call on him, Dad, I'm not broken. that doesn't equal defeat. I can wait and I'll change a degree at a time and still rest in the knowledge that my beloved is mine and the darkness can't change that and neither can sin as he takes me and heals me because it starts from within. Confusion might blind me, I might look like a mess. Don't tell me I'm broken.